you have been with us since the beginning of the show. It starts at 7 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. The name is Why in the Morning. We started off on a very, very fast pace. Let me slow it down for you, just for the sake of us interacting and letting information sink in. My name is Valentine. We're at Kalami Val. So I think we'll just move on from there. We'll just pick it up and go with it. You can reach us or interact with us at White 5 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Today is Tuesday. The hashtag is Y in in the morning myself i am at kalami val as in balan penanga marangi yes now we're going to get into conversation matters health and if you remember a couple of episodes ago we were talking about some of the things that are including and not limited to or rather but not limited to things like high and low blood pressure i have a question guys really youth youth how is youth being affected by things that we deem for a certain age bracket now no it out loud <laughs> but we're going to be discussing that and much more but with focus on obesity so with me is a doctor very sharply dressed and and very knowledgeable just for the couple of minutes that we have had a conversation he is a wellness champion among other things but let him introduce himself now good morning thank you very good morning good morning how are you i'm good welcome please introduce thank yourself. you so much i'm dr songo bonfas mm -hmm. a medical officer uh, with the kutiafe group of medical centers mm -hmm. uh, currently practicing in Kitengela mm -hmm. and the South B branches. I also uh, CEO and founder of Stable Health Foundation, which is a champion on preventive medicine. Okay. Hey, yes, what is preventive medicine all about? This is but the part where we don't have to wait to cough, 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 almost die, then we come to the doctor, because yeah, yeah. we're like that. And nowadays, again, I don't know if it's something that's plaguing the youth, but self-diagnosis is a very big thing for us. Just the other day, I was cleaning my ears. So I cleaned, I cleaned, but I think I cleaned too hard. <laughs> So I felt some pain. I googled and I had two hours to live. But all I had to do was sleep and wake up and I was fine. So is self-diagnosis something that is inhibiting people to actually come to you for the right consultation? So it's really a big issue mm -hmm. in the medical fraternity because self-medication means you miss that aspect of a doctor's advice. And uh, uh, doctor's work is not only, only on creative medicine mm -hmm. because you can get a self-prescription of an antibiotic or a painkiller. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, maybe you are homer was mm -hmm. because of uh, a low immunity that was now worsened by an infection. So when you come to the doctor, the doctor is able to, pre to advise you also some things to do with preventive so mm -hmm. that you know apart from the antibiotic, the painkiller, mm -hmm. what if you do lemon, you do water, you do um, some things that can boost your vitamins mm -hmm. uh, and that will help the body to fight against the next infection. So the purpose of uh, going to the doctor rather than uh, self-prescription is because you want to ensure the population is healthy and mm -hmm. partly why we do that is because wellness is more of how best can you be without really seeing a doctor all routine basis yeah so that's oh. the basis of why you should be seeing a doctor even when you have issues like flu mm -hmm. so wellness is not for the sick wellness is about the state of uh, being in in good health mm -hmm. holistically yes mm -hmm. all right so again still on preventative medicine or preventative methods I can look in the mirror and just believe that I am okay. <laughs> there's, there's no outward sign, there's no outward symptom or situation. But the next minute I could collapse and it's something that's been building up. But going for checkups again is not something that the youth really... Like, ah, by the way, I'm an end hospital, I'm an end doctor. So how do we change the mindset? How do we change perspective of the youth out there? Uh, sure, sure. It's, it's really a, a, a tough issue in the medical fraternity, especially dealing with the youth, uh, because we come from a background where we believe that uh, youths are not prone to diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of the issues, maybe youths fear are STIs, issues of uh, maybe infections, peptic ulcer disease, among others. Mm -hmm. But now we have come to a time in which we are reaching out and it will take multifactorial departments, including the media, um, the doctors, even the churches and among other organizations, the government, mm -hmm. so that we are reaching out through aggressive campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, why I'm, I'm passionate about this, uh, I will give you an example of what I went through in the last two weeks. Okay. I'm there in the clinic as usual, seeing my clients in the outpatient care mm -hmm. set up, and uh, a youth comes in with a left-sided chest pain. Uh, the funny thing is that the youth collapsed at work. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So when they were brought in in, in that uh, uh, van, mm -hmm. so they came in, they were taken to casualty. Um, so the story was that he was just okay, then all of a sudden, Boom. If, yeah. 
So when I would, we tried to do history examination, the pressures were elevated, which is something that is wa what was worrying to me as a doctor, because when I see pressures of above 140 in a youth, mm -hmm. who has a left side uh, chest pain history mm -hmm. and has collapsed at work, then mm -hmm. something that is ringing in my mind, this is something to do with the heart uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what happened is a series of uh, uh, resuscitation, we able the youth was okay. Then we do, we do an ECG, which is a heart monitor. Mm -hmm. And something that was shocking to me is that the, it was abnormal which I never expected mm -hmm. and now up to there we now have to refer to a cardiologist so I repeat ECG confirmed that there was a problem for, with the coronary artery that's a vessel that supplies the heart with blood mm -hmm. it was uh, in a way blocked so affected the some part of the heart so these are issues that we are dealing with Valentine that uh, youths are now prone to lifestyle diseases this was a, a somebody below 30 years mm -hmm. and uh, I had to actually personally uh, take the patient to the cardiologist because it was shocking to me. Mm. Somebody who I'm older than, and there's something that the doctor told me, the receiving cardiologist, that I've never seen mm -hmm. such a condition below 36 years. The last he saw five years ago was a 36-year-old man mm -hmm. who had the same symptoms. So the youths are, we are really affected with these things. And, um, and I, maybe we'll talk about how even erectile dysfunction is now coming down to 32 years, simply because issues of hypertension, wow. stress, among others, are contributing, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Wow. It's okay. a worrying trend, and uh, we must speak these things to the youth uh, because it's really worrying the medical fraternity. Eh. How, how does that gel with you as a wellness champion? A lifestyle disease below 30, what does, what does that even mean, really? Is it that we're not eating right? Are we not exercising enough? What's happening? Uh, I will say... Mm -hmm. Partly it's our responsibility as the youth, mm -hmm. but partly it's the parents maybe mm -hmm. who have not taken the responsibility to train as youth. Uh, I cannot say I'm a youth because now I'm a parent. I'm now assuming my, <laughs> my <laughs> child wrong. in the next few years will be, will be coming to call me a, a grandparent or a parent. Oh, now wow. I'm looking at it this way. Mm. As youths, we have to take the initiatives. Because some of them you realize, mm -hmm. as I will be mentioning in our today's topic, is that genetics plays a role also. Mm -hmm. So that means some of them will be self-induced, but mm -hmm. some are things that we, we really have no control as youths. They mm -hmm. were genetic disorders that mm -hmm. we inherited from our, uh, our parents. So mm -hmm. I, these issues are about understanding which ones have you played a role. We call them modifiable risk factors, mm -hmm. like sedentary lifestyle, unhealthy diet, issues of stress, uh, issues of smoking, alcohol intake. And we realize, Val, that um, the youths, we, the generation we are living in is that... Um, we, we have gone to what you call westernization. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, our grandmothers used to take uh, some natural foods, mm. managu, saga. You remember those uh, mm. times? Mm. But the youth of today in Nairobi is, uh, yeah. is, is junk foods, fast foods. Mm -hmm. And this is why the trend has gone uh, this fast. Mm -hmm. But now we are talking about a, a rapid increase of lifestyle diseases of people below 40 years, which mm -hmm. is a, a year. So the factors that contribute are multifactorial. But an diet and sedentary lifestyle, that's lack of exercise, has really played a key role. Of course, genetics without underestimating the role of genetic exposure. Okay, I, I want to ask a question stemming from something that's happening right now, current affairs. So we know that the finance table, uh, the finance bill is about to be heard for the second time. So I, I was, you know, quickly brushing uh, shoulders with one of my colleagues in a setting just this morning. Yes, and we were discussing how we're being affected as a people, Wachatuna youth, as a people. With, can we afford three solid meals? So is, can I really place blame on a youth who, can, who is an opt to eating fast food because simply it's kind of on the pocket so that I can have more or enough t tomorrow to, you know, move about. But is it something that is, you know, gradual that I've done for years and years and years, now it's reflecting now? Or is it something that I've done in a month and now the e effects are showing. How, is there a timeline to this? It's, um, it's both. Uh, it's really? gradual. It's mm -hmm. something that takes a while. Um, example is wha wha when I mention about uh, something that is really becoming a burden, what we call atherosclerosis, which we learned in biology form one, mm -hmm. form two, which means the blood vessels are narrowed in, in a youth or in an adult mm -hmm. because there's cholesterol that accumulates in your blood vessel. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, you don't, it doesn't mean you took cholesterol in the morning or you put fat, or you took chicken. Mm. It means something that was accumulating on a slow progression mm -hmm. until a time 
that now the vessels is really narrowed and to a level that blood cannot circulate. Mm -hmm. So when you see somebody with varicose veins as an example, Val, mm -hmm. it's not that the veins developed overnight. When mm -hmm. There's a, a vein uh, uh, behind the leg that is uh, a duct in color, that means the circulation is compromised. So it's something that is gradual. Mm -hmm. So the current economy is a, a contributor, I will mention, mm -hmm. because maybe people are not able to afford uh, healthy foods, mm -hmm. but I will also tell you, Val, mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to go to expensive foods mm -hmm. for you to be healthy. Rather than going for broccoli, mm -hmm. you can go to ginger, which is five shillings. Mm -hmm. So there's also alternative on mm -hmm. expensive healthy foods. Mm -hmm. So it's an issue of culture, mindset, and what you call the environment you are in. Mm -hmm. um, even even political, yes, it will play a role, mm -hmm. but it's mostly on the other aspect. I'm looking at a, a yesterday newspaper. Mm -hmm. You realize that youth who wants about 50,000 takes home about um, 5K mm -hmm. after the, the uh, subtraction of the basic requirements, mm -hmm. that is food, shelter, accommodation. That is The, as, the assumption in, uh, in what I saw is that this person is not married, mm -hmm. is a single uh, individual. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a, a factor maybe we can also consider, mm -hmm. so that this person will think, why should I buy a blender to mm -hmm. make healthy juices? Mm -hmm. uh, it will now factor between a blender and traveling to see the parents in the village. And oh, that and might you also can't contribute. Go yes. Uh -huh. So somebody will say, why should I buy expensive mangoes, apples in my house to take daily? Mm -hmm. Yet I, I need to support my parents back at home by sending them 10,000 every month. Mm -hmm. So that is also a big issue that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And the stress because of economic hard times mm -hmm. might also contribute to lifestyle diseases in a big way. And we'll be able to see that. Oh, wow. Yes. When I was growing up, my mom used to, uh, or just generally the older generation used to ask us, why are you stressed? You don't have children. You're not paying rent. Why are you stressed? <laughs> and clearly things have changed a couple of years later. Where? Hashtag is in the morning. Okay, let's zero in to why we are here today. And the matter is obesity. While I was introducing the segment earlier, I was... I was honestly quite shocked. The, the first time I heard about this was a few weeks ago. There was a documentary, I think, on Al Jazeera. And they're talking about obesity in Africa. But Africa is always associated with starvation, malnutrition, you know, basically terrible food security. So how then have we jumped from that to obesity? Is it a rich person problem? What's happening here? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's the same, um, that's the reality mm -hmm. of life is that we never expected this topic to be a concern in Africa. Mm. And not only in Africa, but to the youth population. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this from various dynamics. First, by definition, obesity is excessive or abnormal accumulation of fat that will impair your health. Mm -hmm. So that's a simple definition of obesity. And when I look at this, uh, there's now um, a way in which you're able to determine whether you're obese or not. Uh, an example is where you look at somebody and um, I've, uh, you have gone to somewhere and people have what you call kitambi. Mm -hmm. And kwa mta tunasema kitambi ni kujitakia urefu ni ya kuzaliwa nayo. Wow. Now, uh, in, a, in a simple way, <laughs> now this, um, uh, how will you think uh -huh. if um, uh, the people think they have belly, they think they're in good shape. Mm -hmm. Or they, uh, especially for men, especially the youth. They, mm. There's that belief that you can like time you can pass eh. so that the ladies will be liking coming to you, all <laughs> those things. But in reality, in reality, <laughs> when that kitambi is coming on, uh -huh. we are at risk of what you call overweight and obesity. Now, in overweight and obesity, by definition, I've said it's excessive or abnormal accumulation of fat. Mm -hmm. But in, 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 in medical calculation, mm -hmm. we classify them using what you call a basic metabolic index, BMI. BMI. Mm. This BMI calculator, which we'll be able to demonstrate to you mm -hmm. today, and I will tell you for sure, your BMI is okay. <laughs> Uh, but 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 I'm encouraging Kenyans uh -huh. not to assume uh -huh. by just physical appearance it's uh -huh. good to do the measure. I'm only telling you because of the experience I've had for the last five years I've practiced as a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. But in reality, the BMI should calculate your height and weight. Mm -hmm. So we take your weight, we take your height, and the nutritionist to, today will be able to demonstrate. And if it's 18 to 25, actually 18.5 to 25.99, mm -hmm. so 24.99. Mm -hmm. That is a normal person. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm looking at this now that in the past, like in 2016, in mm -hmm. the U.S., we are talking about 39% and on average had a BMI of more than 25. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are increasing and they are projecting mm -hmm. that by 2030, 85% of the U.S. population will be overweight and obesity. That means BMI of above 25. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, obesity in the other side is now when it goes above 25, but you don't 
leave it there, you take it above 30. Oh. That is now when we call it obesity. Otherwise, you can have a, no, a BMI which is not normal, but you are not obese, mm -hmm. which is called overweight, overweight. or pre-obese. Pre means you are ah, mark just timing. Before. Oh, wow. Just before. Now, the question on Africa, mm -hmm. I want to put it here. As we are talking about this burden in the U.S., the same year, 2016, the World Health Organization reported that in now countries like Kenya, the figures were less than 19%. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. More than 19% of the population who were assessed, who the measurements were taken, were had a BMO of more than 25, which means they were overweight and obesity. Mm -hmm. Now, globally, it was 1.9 million. That tells you that in Kenya, we were fewer. Mm -hmm. Now, shockingly, the latest research done in Kenya is showing that the number is increasing. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing is that they say the rate in which obesity and overweight are increasing in urban setup of middle and low income countries like Kenya mm -hmm. is even getting at a faster rate even compared to the Western countries in urban, in urban wow. setup. Because of the westernization, we have onboarded everything that is junk food mm -hmm. without knowing the guidelines. A Kenyan will take chips will take a lot of calories in a day. Mm -hmm. And a U.S. person taking the same calories is informed how many of those grams he has taken. In Kenya, we have an element of lack of information combined with exposure, which is partial. And wow. that is why in urban areas, in middle and low-income countries, the rate has increased. Mm -hmm. So the projection today is that 40% of an adult population above 18 years and, and going above uh -huh. are currently overweight and obese. Uh -huh. But now the, the one that is research documented is the World Health Organization of 2016. We showed that 19% had a, a, a BMI of above 25. So this is issue is coming to down to us and uh, you will blame it to what we call moving, shifting from nutritionally healthy foods that were culturally African based to a westernization diet that mm -hmm. is less of fiber less of um, nutritious components and more fat mm -hmm. because obesity and uh, obesity over it we have said is accumulation of fat mm -hmm. in the body yes okay so okay i think when that the the world health organization was releasing that those particular yes, statistics yes, yes. I, I watched another documentary yes, just yes, yes. i like information yes, yes. that it's it's easier for western yes. countries or it's cheaper to buy maybe a hamburger it's way cheaper than actually healthy food. So there's a ca imbalance in that particular area. But for us here, it's completely the opposite. It's more expensive to buy, you know, fries from your favorite vendor. But kuna status fulani. Yeah, you want to take us healthy because you just bought fries from this particular franchise. You want yes, everyone yes, yes, to yes, know. Yes, so yes, yes. I will literally just, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Exactly. Is that why we're perishing? Very true. Eh. I'm looking at a scenario whereby we are perishing because we are lack information. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I will be telling you, I'm looking at it from what you are explaining, that uh, health foods in Kenya is cheap. Very. I go to the village. Eh. I go to my village and people are healthy. And for information, 60 percent, the 40 percent I gave you is an average. Mm -hmm. The same local research done showed that before we got the average, they also separated urban and and uh, the village or let's call it rural, rural. population. Mm. And they said 60 percent in urban, and it was about should be 19.5 percent in the rural. Mm -hmm. That's where an average comes to 40%. Mm -hmm. So that tells you, the question is, well, between Nairobi or between the urban setup mm. and the rural setup, who spends more? And in Nairobi. Nairobi. Some. So that also should uh, tell you something that in Kenya, we are proud mm -hmm. and we, we, are, we are happy people because we can afford health foods at a very low cost. Mm -hmm. We just do farming, we, we plant maize, we plant mboga, we, we have fruits all over, go to Machakos, nice maembes. I've gone to so many areas in, 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 uh, locally in Kenya mm -hmm. and I've seen nice foods out there. The problem is that those foods are not maybe appealing mm. simply because of the mindset now. Mm. So what we are interested today as wellness champions mm -hmm. is to change the mindset of the community, mm -hmm. youths being included. Mm -hmm. Yes. So ni ni sawa tukikula, you know, unga ya kisiagi kuliko ingine. Yes. Kwanza ingine ni more expensive boy. Yes, unga ya kisiagi is very healthy. Mm -hmm. I personally do unga ya kisiagi. I have maize that I've brought from Kitale, mm -hmm. the house. After a week, I go to the posho meal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go, mi mwenyewe. Mm -hmm. Because I understand the benefit of that unga mm -hmm. compared now to 
um, what imetolewa ile ni ya nje mm -hmm. and there are some kisiagi mtu anaenda na mahindi anasema ni toleo ngozi what you call grade 1 but uh -huh. you wonder why should you even you si uenda kwa duko nuno eh <laughs> kama ni hivyo <laughs> kama ni hivyo so it's a mindset issue mm -hmm. Uh, what we call now lack of information. Mm -hmm. Yes, a misinformed uh, population will now lead us to a crisis in which we are today. I will mm -hmm. show you, when you talk about obesity, you cannot separate it from diabetes and hypertension. Oh, wow. What you call metabolic syndrome. I mm -hmm. will come to that at the end of uh, the brief talk, mm -hmm. so that you realize that obesity is not just obesity. It the reason we are discussing obesity is mm -hmm. because obesity is the number one leading cause of other diseases called diabetes, hypertension, among other risks like stroke, mm -hmm. uh, heart attack, among other what you call complications of obesity. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this is actually to evade a crisis, mm -hmm. an impending crisis, an impending pandemic valley. Mm -hmm. That pandemic is issues of lifestyle disease, diabetes and hypertension that have really increased in our communities. Mm -hmm. yes. Actually, my next question was going to be, now what yes. are the consequences of obesity? What, what happens if we continue projecting as we are as a country, as a nation? What would what, what happen to us then? Um, that's actually the worry now. Mm -hmm. Because look, looking at the statistics, we are talking about, it was 19% in 2016, it's now increasing to 40% on average, 60% in urban setup, and I also do my own research. You see, sometimes I, I take the World Health Organization research, mm -hmm. but I also do my own research. Mm -hmm. So uh, lately I've gone to some populations, medical camps, wellness camps, mm -hmm. where I saw a camp where we had 67%, we had a BMI of above 25. That mm -hmm. is to something well. That as much as the numbers are 40, 20, 90, they are increasing still. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this as a burden, not only to the medical families, but to the entire population, including the government. Mm -hmm. Now, complications of obesity comes in two ways. One, okay, let me say we, we use a term called metabolic syndrome, which I want every Kenyan to know this term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go to your doctor, discuss about metabolic syndrome because it's becoming a, a burden. So in, in complications of obesity, I look at it this way. One, in metabolic syndrome is a combination of four conditions. We call them four cluster conditions. Mm -hmm. So one is called elevated uh, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Two, elevated blood sugar. Mm -hmm. That's why for me to check your BMI, I also, it's important to check your blood sugar and blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Three is excessive um, fat accumulation around the waist. Mm -hmm. Or a, a waist circumference that is above maybe 85 or 100. The nutritionist will give those figures. For a lady, there's a waist circumference that is ideal, but also depends on height, among other factors. Mm -hmm. Now. The last one, which is the most dangerous part of this metabolic syndrome, mm -hmm. is called elevated cholesterol or triglyceride levels in your blood. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we call it metabolic syndrome in medical field? Is that these four things, 90% almost of the time they occur together. Mm -hmm. So when I look at complications, they come from those four things. One, in case you have obesity, that chances are that you have elevated cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Chances are that your blood vessels will block, mm -hmm. which we, we call atherosclerosis. That is the medical fraternity, which is not English. It's from Latin, atheroma, which means porridge in English. <laughs> so if a vessel is narrowed, what, wow. what will a, a narrowed vessel do? Uh -huh. Pressure in a panda. No kweli. Ni kama pipe ya maji, umeweka mchanga ndani. Mm. Maji yanapita hapo. Jikoni utapata maji. Mm. So pia, ukifunga mshipa wako na cholesterol because of that metabolic syndrome, because cholesterol tumesema yuko mingi, mm -hmm. damu inashindo kufika kwa brain, mm. kwa heart. That's what happened to the youth. Coronary vessel had narrowed. The heart, like a, 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 something that inapeleka maji, damu kwa ikashindo kufikisha. Mm -hmm. So the blood vessel was not able to perfuse the mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And that leads to heart attack within the brain, leads to stroke, if it's in the uh, le legs, numbness, mm. mtu anaganda. If it's in the headache before you let a stroke, mtu anakuwa na migraine val. Kila siku daktari kicho, kicho, kicho because of narrowed vessel. So those are some of the complications that come because of lack of circulation. The other thing is diabetes now. Mm -hmm. In diabetes, there are so many causes. Issues of genetic, mm -hmm. issues of so many things that we cannot discuss. Mm -hmm. But one of the things mm -hmm. is that inactivity and poor eating habits. Mm -hmm. These two lead to diabetes with one common cause, what you call, when you have an health diet, when you don't exercise, there is elevated cholesterol in your vessels, which means, ile sukari kwa kwa damu, inashindwa kuingia kwa mwili. Mm. Because ume, umepaka, mshipa wa damu mafuta. Mm -hmm. It's a science that I cannot discuss uh, because it's more medical, it's mm. but that means you develop resistance to insulin. Mm -hmm. Because insulin should get sugar from your blood 
to the body. But because you have blocked it by cholesterol, there is insulin resistance, and that's what we call type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. That is now the pandemic in the world. Mm -hmm. Because initially we used to talk about type 1, which is a mm -hmm. But type 2 is maybe, but also has a genetic component that mm -hmm. we'll discuss maybe in another day when you talk about diabetes. Today is obesity. Mm -hmm. So that one complication of obesity is diabetes, and they are connected in the metabolic syndrome. What's the other complication? Issues now of psychosocial stress. stress, figure eight. They call size eight. <laughs> Yet, yet mtu anaona, tumbo yake memkata, maybe ya medeliva, kuna watoto wawili, tumbo imefura hapa. So that stress, anxiety, all that will now also become another complications of obesity. So stress and mental health. The other issue on this topic is arthritis. But in hypertension, we cannot forget to mention possibility of a heart attack, possibility of varicose veins, among other complications that are in regards to that. Now, uh, low immunity as a complication. Mm -hmm. This one is another topic for another day in which uh, during COVID, mm -hmm. research showed that in, in the 4% of the people that died in COVID, mm -hmm. most of them had lifestyle diseases. So while that should oh. tell us something as a community. Mm -hmm. Why Africans never died the rate in which other people died, mm -hmm. which are not mentioned countries, mm -hmm. is because maybe our rate in which our bodies were prone to this metabolic syndrome was low. Mm -hmm. So during COVID, most people died of diabetes, hypertension, a stroke, cancer. Mm -hmm. That tells us that for us to prevent another pandemic from clearing up a bigger number, mm -hmm. we need to prevent this metabolic syndrome. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, hypertension, stroke, cancers among the major diseases that in, killed people in, in the pandemic. Why was that important? When you are obese, mm -hmm. your immunity might be affected because of these other diseases that come in. Mm -hmm. So the body is not able to fight against the infections. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important that managing obesity will also boost somebody's immunity. During COVID, I had kids who are obese. Kila wiki mbili. Daktari, tonsils. Mm. I'm not managing tonsils and sinuses. Mm. When I look at that child, I, yes, I know I will give antibiotics. They will come back after maybe two weeks because they will feel nice for another two weeks. Mm. But I know the real animal I'm managing is the weight. Mm -hmm. Because the moment they are obese, even the cholesterol, the adipose tissue excess will affect the child immunity in a B way. Mm -hmm. So among other complications that we can mention, especially now when you tackle different diseases, so those are the key. Uh, among the major contributors to obesity, uh, uh, the major uh, complications of overweight and obesity. Oh, you really yes. are a wellness champion. Honestly, the first time I heard that something to do with metabolic syndrome yeah. or called, something. Called symptoms. also syndrome X. Oh, yes, yes. okay. You I can just research assume, more about that. <laughs> I just assumed it would be something like yes. bowel movement or something. Oh, it's <laughs> a lot more complicated than yes, I thought. Yes, hey, yes, it's yes. a good day to learn something. Okay. All right, I just want to ask this as a lay person before now we figure out how to prevent and yes, yes. to maybe cure if there is a cure. Yes. Not everyone who is big is, is unfit. But I've, I've come to learn that, you know. They're not all at one size. At they're all very slim or they're curvy in certain places or like you said, the circ waist circumference. Yes, I like yes, the way yes. you said it. Yes. Not everyone has a particular body shape. So, and that means, that translates into I can be as I am, but I am not fit. Like I can be very petite in nature, but that does not mean I'm fit. I'm probably even worse off than someone else. So. You can't really tell by looking at the outer shell, can you? It's not easy. It's only that when you look at the outer shell, it gives you like a, a clear picture. There are those you see as a doctor and you say, this one, this one is a, a, a walking bomb. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So in Siari, we used to say living dead, but we don't use that anymore. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it means like you see somebody who has a BMI of 35, mm -hmm. and as a doctor, you feel like crying because mm -hmm. when you see that person with a BMI of 35 walking the streets, Confidently. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Well, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So physical, of course, you cannot predict the risks. Especially, you can get somebody who has a BMI of 20. By the way, my BMI is not below 25. Mm -hmm. It's good I mentioned this. Mm -hmm. But I've brought it from 28 to 26. Mm -hmm. Because I ensured, as a wellness champion, I also realized that I, I'm also a, pos a potential patient wow. to somebody as a doctor. Mm -hmm. So my BMI today is 26.1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. From 28 point something there. So that means uh, as, uh, when you look at me, you might not think I'm, I'm over it, mm -hmm. but I'm over it by just one factor. Mm -hmm. So, but now there are those you see, 
and you, you, you don't even need to do measurements. The measurements you do is just to confirm and tailor make mm. a plan. Because mm -hmm. what will work for Vel will not work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. This conversation has a significance because there are other things that can cause obesity. Mm -hmm. Apart from unhealthy eating habits, lack of exercise, there's genetic, uh, what, uh, some conditions like what we call um, uh, prada Willi syndrome. Uh, those who you don't need to understand about them. There's what you we saw call my face, like Prada who? <laughs> Uh, uh, s some of them are too technical that even uh, I, I have to, 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 to show you, but on a, maybe on another day. Mm -hmm. another, another thing is um, you, you develop resistance to what we call leptin. Leptin, leptin is, a, is like kind of a hormone mm -hmm. so that m controls your metabolism. So somebody might be born with mm -hmm. leptin deficiency. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, genetically they can't metabolize things the way other persons metabolize. Mm -hmm. So and it's good to understand that not necessarily when you see somebody obese is that they have eaten wrong foods. Mm -hmm. But if you have that genetic exposure to, for example, leptin mm -hmm. deficiency mm -hmm. and you eat unhealthy foods, so you are in more danger than somebody uh -huh. who is not genetically at risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so that's uh, what I can mention on that. It's important you raise that concern mm -hmm. that... Um, uh, when you look at somebody, you must do the measurements. You must even sometimes do cholesterol level in blood. Mm -hmm. You do the waist circumference. You do the BMI. And BMI is not a, a standard measure because it lim has limitations. Mm -hmm. Especially, so we, we have to consider age. Mm -hmm. We have to consider for children, we have other measures we do. Mm -hmm. But for adults, we also have to factor the aspect that uh, there are other things that we need to consider apart from just your weight and height. Mm -hmm. That's why BMI sometimes has a limit. Because it, we only make assumption using your height and weight. Mm -hmm. That's why the nutritionist will do other things we call body mass composition analysis. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy today with the, that machine and well, we shall do your body mass analysis composition, yes. which will show you your estimate, mm -hmm. not accurate, mm -hmm. estimate of your visceral fat, estimate of your body content, estimate of your, your current BMI, your blood sugar, your blood pressure. When actually the machine and the nutritionist will use all those parameters to calculate what we call your metabolic age. So, well, you could be wow. 20 years, you look young, mm -hmm, but so because you are healthy, and metabolically, mm -hmm. that's according to ID, mm -hmm. and metabolically, maybe you are 17 years. That means your body is so healthy. And at the same time, Val, mm -hmm. in the same group, we can measure somebody who's 27 years, mm -hmm. and metabolically, they are 35 years. Oh. So, are you getting something there? Mm -hmm. That uh, it's not about what I see. Mm -hmm. It's about... How is your body? How is your sugar? How mm. is your blood pressure? How is your waist circumference? How is your BMI? Mm. How is your visceral fat? How is your water content? Because you might have not taken water the whole day, Val. And that means your body is, is mm. wearing out faster mm. in a Zekaraka. Mm. And if you don't take water for one year, as a doctor, I can, I can do some things there with the nutritionist and we'll be able to see. So metabolic age is a measure of so many parameters. So that's why BMI is not the only factor to determine whether you are healthy. There mm. are other parameters to measure. Okay. Yes, yes. So maybe in conclusion, preventive methods, or maybe if there's a cure, I don't know if there's really a cure to... <laughs> there is cure, uh -huh. there is prevention. Uh -huh. So for the sake of maybe the audience and the public audience, I will not go into medical parts mm -hmm. on, on management. Uh, focus will be how do the youths play a role in the prevention. So in prevention, we look at, uh, I classify it mainly into two parts, mm -hmm. because I, I'm not going to prevent genetics. Mm -hmm to prevent genetics is to ensure the youth of today is mm. eating healthy mm -hmm. so that their kids will not be prone to lifestyle oh, diseases. Oh, from the... B okay, yes. okay. Yes, we call it Becker hypothesis. I want you to research about that. Baker That's your hypothesis. assignment. Uh, Becker hypothesis proposes uh -huh. that uh, when you are pregnant, your kids are exposed to under or malnutrition. That means you are giving them wrong foods. In, in, the, in the womb, kids might be born mm -hmm. with that insufficiency or mm -hmm. malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And it shows that if you don't eat well, mm -hmm. your kids are born with that aspect, they, they grow up to try to compensate. Oh. <laughs> so they start eat, eating so much. But mm -hmm. that is a, an hypothesis mm -hmm. uh, for you to Big research hypothesis. about. Let me go back to what we can do. Mm -hmm. Because genetics, are, we, we really don't do much. We just pray that our parents are not giving us the diseases. But as a youth, ensure your kids will not be cast because of mm -hmm. lifestyle exposure that you are giving them right now mm -hmm. by taking maybe a lot of uh, carbonated drinks mm -hmm. all these things mm -hmm. now for prevention uh, i classify them to mainly two mm -hmm. one how do we reduce energy intake mm -hmm. and number two how do we increase energy expenditure that is the whole of prevention mm -hmm. so all the points that we'll discuss i will mention briefly is that one 
how are you reducing the intake of energy? Mm -hmm. Where do we get energy from? Mm -hmm. Mostly calories. Mm -hmm. And of course, proteins, gas, uh, For your information, well, the people don't take meat and they're obese. I'm a vegetarian doctor. I take nine chapatis a, a per supper. Mm. You are even at more danger than somebody who takes a mark daily because mm. the chapati you are eating daily mm -hmm. are, prone, are exposing you to excess calories, mm -hmm. which is excess energy, mm -hmm. which is above 2,000 for a lady mm -hmm. and 2,500 calories for a man. Mm -hmm. Excess of those calories, let me say, Val, somebody eats chapatis and managu nasaga, mm -hmm. which is 4,500 mm -hmm. calories. Mm -hmm. And somebody who takes uh, proteins mm -hmm. and ogali takes 2,000, which is according to the medical recommendation, mm -hmm. will be obese. The one who has taken Chapo. chapatis, mm. nasaga, I may avoid what he thinks is fat because the body takes the calories, which mm. is chapatis, converts it to adipose tissue, which is fat. Uh -huh. So somebody will come with a belly. Hey, what, what, chapo, si not only Boy. chapatis. Hey. Um, uh, we have mukimo, mm. we have mwashe, we have unduma, we have biscuits. <laughs> No, as if it a crisp, crisps, crisps. Uh, uh, English ningum. Those things which look like chi chips, but it's mekatokato. Uh, People, uh, ladies, ladies, you are in a in a car and you see ladies. Oka kipita tu hivi, ni pay, ni pay. Mtu anakula siku mzima, those five packets. Mm -hmm. Go and read today, well, how many calories are in one pack? Where? And if they are, if you eat more than two thousand calories, mm. remember you have also taken something in the morning, mm. which maybe is bread, mandazi, which is calories. Mm -hmm. So one thing to to prevent obesity, well, is reduce your energy intake mm -hmm. to at least on average two thousand mm -hmm. to two thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you have done that, but how do you prevent? Is through diet and uh, diet, diet, diet. There's mm. no shortcut. Diet, diet, diet. Mm -hmm. We call it eat well plate. We call it in another form, they call it dash plan. Dash mm. means mm -hmm. that that prevents hypertension. In another US, they call it avad that plan. Mm -hmm. Eat well plate, avad that plan, dash eating plan. All these formulas in the website of World Health Organization, they go to one focus. Fruits, vegetables in plenty, reduce fat. Mm -hmm. So don't eat nyama, kila siku, mbuzi, choma. Mm. Reduce calories mm -hmm. to minimum you need in a day. Mm -hmm. To the, the amount you need in a day. Mm -hmm. So that is the reducing energy intake. Let me go to the increasing expenditure. Mm -hmm. Value of eaten, maybe by but in by omenda bash. Mm -hmm. Youth wanna penda parties, eh? Mm -hmm. So omenda bash, umekula ile nyama, matunda, na calories. Na sahani na kam mountain. Ndiyo sasa, mm -hmm. sasa, mountain. Mm -hmm. Kwanza mtu wanaenda buffet, anabeba, mbaka anayeka kwa mfuko. <laughs> Wajia, kwa ikona mini ngumu, ikona mini ngumu, so napata mwana yuta akoshere, anabeba, 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 mbaka chapati kwa ufuku. Ya kesho. Then anakula stock ya kesho. So they, they, there is this mentality that, you nimelala, kwanza campus uh, uh, people. Ana shout. Mtu ananda nyumbani, anafikiri akikula hii wiki ya whole day, anabeba stock. Kumbo anabeba ugonjwa because the body cannot carry stock for you for long. The body takes excess, converts to adipose tissue. Um, of course, you and your stock are manisha. Mm. The stock is not called proteins, uh, carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. The stock that you can carry from home to the university is called adipose tissue, which mm. is fat around the waist. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go to, uh, we are now, we, to my a diet, mm -hmm. increased expenditure means... If you have eaten 3,500 in a day, Val, mm -hmm. today you have gone to the uh, cafeteria, but then you have a nice cafeteria, nice food. Mm -hmm. Just take a nimekua hapo, nimekula chapati, tam sana. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I hope you will invite me next time so that uh, <laughs> I welcome. enjoy that food. Eh? <laughs> so when you have eaten that food, mm -hmm. but in you have bash, you excess. So Val, this is what I encourage our youth to do. And I'm doing it practically. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I will uh, demonstrate this. Mm -hmm. Exercise recommended by World Health Organization. And the Ministry of Health approved it mm -hmm. under the Kenya Cardiac Guideline mm -hmm. booklet that every doctor works with. says, each person, youth, adult, wherever, you should exercise for 30 minutes daily at minimum. Daily? Not walking to work. <laughs> walking to work, <laughs> brisk walking. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do that, you come out of studio, <laughs> go home, change, go to a gym, take your bike, Take a, a rope, skip for 30 minutes to increase your circulation. Not only circulation, uh -huh. that will burn calories. Exercise should be moderate to intensity. Una sweat val. Mm -hmm. Una sweat kabisandio. Una choma ile, ile calories excessive uh -huh. in the body. So 30 minutes daily or at minimum mm -hmm. for a week, 250 minutes. For those who are overweight and obesity, we even tell them to do more. Mm -hmm. So if your target is 30 minutes daily, for them we give them 45 to 90 minutes according to the nutritional and the dietitian manual mm -hmm. that is 
started worldwide mm -hmm. that we even increase the time they exercise how they exercise mm -hmm. so e-exercise should be enjoyable and fun mm -hmm. a youth of today will not see the reason why you should tell them to jog around the estate mm. but a youth of today like me mm -hmm. what i've done and mm -hmm. it has helped me and some youth in kitengela mm -hmm. every wednesday every monday every friday and sunday mm -hmm. tunacheza ball what we call seven aside mm -hmm. two hours of ex intensive exercise mm -hmm. Ukimaliza hapo maybe siku zingine uende gym, mm -hmm. siku zingine uruke kamba, siku zingine ufanye hii. Mm -hmm. So utakuwa umeachieve to 50 minutes well. It's very intentional like Na unaenda una bicycle pia? Mhm. Mm Kama uko busy, unajua kuna watu wanasema I'm very busy in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. You are calling time. them very busy looking for money and that money well at 50 years if unatafuta pesa ukifika 50 years ulisahau mazoezi na chakula, hiyo pesa yote iko hapo inaenda hospitali. And it's sad I've seen people who are working now they are beggars. Hmm. That's why tunasema miaka ya 40 ya kwanza vijana ni miaka ya mtu. Miaka nyingine 20 ya 40 to 60 ni miaka ya punda. Punda ni kubeba mzigo. Unafanya kazi online writing, uko hapa stress, uko studio, photoshoot. Hivi kama wewe daktari unafanya local hospitali tano ulali because unatafuta pesa. Once umefika 1 million in the account, unafika 60 years. Unafika miaka inaitwa miaka ya umbwa. We? Ulikuwa ya binadamu 40 years, punda. ya punda 20, Sasa 20 nyingine ya mwisho inaitwa ya umbwa because ile pesa ya watu ulitafuta kama kijana inaisha mm -hmm. unaanza sasa kuomba unajua mbwa zinaomba kumbuka punda inabeba mzigo umbo inaanza kubweka so unabweka vel nitumie pesa niko na kansa ya macho vel Oi. nitumie pesa naenda kuchukua dawa ya pressure vel watoto wako wote wako Nairobi unawaitisha pesa Aha. marafiki wako wote unawaitisha pesa hiyo miaka ya umbo ni mbaya vel what well. I encourage us to utilize the first 40 years, mm -hmm. ambaye ni miaka ya binadamu. Mm -hmm. So that ile ya punda, tupunguze mzigo, mm -hmm. na ile ya umbwa, tusibweke, bweke kama umbwa. Well. And that is the analogy of uh, a human lineage. As uh -huh. a doctor, ata nikiona mtu wako 60 years, bila, uh, bifa niambia na, kuna shidagani na heza guess. Because wakuna ile magonjwa ya umbwa, pressure nini. Magonjwa wanafanya mtu wanabweka kila siku, dawa ya pressure, ya sukari. Oh. Youth, unajua ni minyo tu wako nae. <laughs> <laughs> Minyo, diarrhea. It's, it's important you say this thing. The same way, the same way then, if somebody comes from a rich estate uh -huh. and somebody from a poor slum, uh -huh. in akikuja kwa rumi yangu kama daktari, uh -huh. sometimes kwa reception ulizu wangu unatoka wapi. Uh -huh. Because mali unatoka, might also help us to know which disease you might be suffering from. <laughs> because people are rich, think that when they are rich, they should eat meat daily in a machoma zone. Mm. And the disease they come with are cancers, diabetes, hypertension. Mm. They call it diseases of the rich. Mm -hmm. While the poor, they eat healthy. The only thing in our sumbua, maybe ni jicha kula healthy, our jawasha wana maji ya kuosha. So they come with diarrhea and vomiting. Uh -huh. That's why a bill of uh, somebody coming from Islam is about 1,500. A bill from somebody coming from this is maybe 1,500. So it's important that we understand your money should not determine the kind of food you eat. Okay. The ah, food yeah. you eat should be determined by doctors and nutritionists who calculate your calories, not the money you have in the bank account. Hey. So reducing your energy intake and increasing expenditure of your energy by exercising daily, uh -huh. doing all this, Intermittent fasting kwa nutrition pia tunayongele okay. but don't do it without a doctor's uh, nutritionist advice mm -hmm. because some people do it wanaka wa, chakaola uliona walikufa huko. Fasting should not be exaggerated. Eh. Intermittent fasting should be programmed by a doctor. Mm -hmm. The formulas are so many. We have more than three formulas. Mm -hmm. One that for example works is you eat at zero hours, you eat eight hours to eat the next meal. So kikula hii ingine unangoja 12 hours. So ulikula asubui saa tatu, mm -hmm. unakula 5 p.m. unalala vizuri. The body is relaxed. Mm -hmm. But see, at Unakas, 24 hours, 36 hours, 72 hours, you have no Ukoto. eaten. You will die. So on, on also managing uh, obesity under reducing intake of energy, mm -hmm. we also talk about the intermittent fasting as a point. So if you manage those two, mm -hmm. leave for us, the doctors, to manage the other things like genetics, what, what, and uh, psychosocial also. Mm -hmm. When you are stressed, your happy hormones mm -hmm. and the metabolic hormones are affected. So don't be stressed as a youth because it will also affect how your weight is managed. On treatment, mm. well, it's none of your concern. Uh, it's our, our doctor's work. Uh -huh. But to treat, you do the same things as prevention. Okay. On top of those, if okay. you are BMI 35, 30 and above, we have even surgical uh -huh. management. Uh -huh. We operate. You have seen cases of operations mm. done. To not the tummy. Liposuction. Liposuction. The other thing, we do balloon. Mm -hmm. It's famous. The gastric one. Gastric balloon. Uh -huh. I've, I've participated in uh, seven of those wow. procedures. Wow. Uh -huh. And they were very successful. Mm -hmm. Somebody had reported a kilo from 120 to 95 sai. Wow. In three, uh, the procedure is done when I got balloon three months. The doctors specialized in that. 
a colleague of mine is a specialty. So mm. when I, I was researching on that procedure, I said, Kuliko ni operate on rumors on what are the side effects. I went and participated in those. Oh. And I currently do them uh, through that center. Mm -hmm. uh, but before if you keep up well, if a new operation, mm -hmm. please, Amazoezi, punguza kukula chakula mingi, na work on the doctor to look at your genetic exposure uh -huh. that might be contributing. That is uh, the uh, summary of prevention and management. All right, Doctor, I thank you. Now, yes, guys, yes. for the sake of time, clearly we can spend hours and hours <laughs> talking about this particular issue, mm -hmm. but we did promise you a small demonstration. Yes, yes, so yes. that is what we are going to be up to right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We'll have the machine coming in, and of course the nutritionist also. Uh, she is donned in uniform, so you'll know. You'll know it's her when you support her at Y25 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. Hashtag of the day is Y in one man, but it's Tuesday, so it's career, it's uh, health, like we're talking about now, and also a dash of entrepreneurship, which we will have later. So now my ABLE team is now on it. So uh, I, I volunteered myself, guys. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Kwa Master. I volunteered myself uh, just to see if if I am okay. If I if I think that I am as healthy as I would like to imagine I am. So just come in, just come in. Don't be afraid, uh, Larry. Just come in. Yes, there we go. We should give him his five minutes of fame and put him on the shot. Thank you very much, Larry. All right. Hi. Good morning. This may require me to stand. Na na tonga All right. So. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What is uh, your good name? Okay, before we do that, let me see if Larry's done. Yes, he is. What is your good name? Uh, my name is Yurela Mondi. Uh -huh. I'm the nutritionist in charge at Equity Afia uh -huh. and also in charge of um, wellness. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so I should come a little bit closer to you. Yes. Then we shall be explaining what we are going to do. I had Dr. You said I look almost okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's prove it. Let's prove it. Uh huh. Uh, this is called wow. the body composition machine. Whoa. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, so I, I just stand on it? Yeah, just stand, stand on, on it. Really? Standing on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're checking my height Your now. Height. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh huh. 164 centimeters. 164. How how much is that in feet? Um, around five three. Three? Yeah. I've always been saying I'm five five. You can I'm kindly small. calm down. Again. <laughs> okay. We give you the accurate feet. We, we use centimeters for BMI calculator yeah. mm -hmm. to compare the feet for your knowledge, but let's talk about here. Okay. But these uh, centimeters is what we use for BMI. Okay, so it's one six, uh, 164. Yes. When you're on a figure, it's about 164 <laughs> centimeters. So All right, so the next thing we are checking is. You can, you can just get in. My age? Yes. Ha! You're going to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can now stand again. I stand again. Yes. All right. And oh, not so bad. <laughs> no, place your hands here. I place here. my hands and here. All right. So that they are sensing something, yes. I'm assuming. Yeah. All right. I've placed my hands. Also on the machine, guys, I see water, visceral fat. There's something called bone. There's calorie. There's muscle. There's fat. Uh -huh. I hope the results are looking good. <laughs> so muscle. How can you tell my muscle? The machine is in a position to do all this. Mm -hmm. So mine is just to explain. Wow. Yes. <laughs> because wow. My bones too. Okay. My visceral fats. Uh, my water, where that is wanting, no, it's okay. Oh, mm. it looked low to me, but okay, not yeah. so bad. The, we are done, all right. So now you can explain, yeah. So mm -hmm. the body composition machine, uh, it's not uh, only about the weight mm -hmm. and the height or the BMI. Mm -hmm. It's about your percentage of fat in your body, mm -hmm. uh, the level of water in your body, the bone density, your daily kilocalories, 
because you know on a normal basis of course you'll not be in a position to under, to tell me like I ate this amount of food in a day mm -hmm. so when you stand in the machine the machine would be in a position to tell me mm -hmm. whether are you overfeeding yourself or are you underfeeding yourself or are you consuming just what your body requires mm -hmm. yeah so of course from there there is the percentage of water and also the visceral fat. Mm -hmm. Now what the doctor had mentioned earlier, your waist circumference. Mm -hmm. Now the visceral fat is mm -hmm. the fat around your stomach. Mm -hmm. Again, the machine is in a position to tell me like, mm -hmm. are you within the normal range or <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> have you surpassed the, the range that, um, you, have you surpassed the normal range? Yes. Mm -hmm. So so according to the results now. So will you be comfortable when I use Sema. it? <laughs> yeah, so your height being one sixty four centimeters mm -hmm. and your weight being fifty five point six. Uh the body uh, your body fat is at thirty two point four percent. Um it's almost near the normal range because we usually say like uh, for a woman the level of fat should be lesser than 30 percent and then for men should be lesser than 20 percent mm -hmm. yes but it's at 32 so yeah. two two above yes okay and then in terms of the muscles these are just the general muscles in your body mm -hmm. where you find uh, normal range should be from 48 to 69 mm -hmm. yeah and the only way for you to gain your muscles is just yeah. through exercise, exercise uh -huh. yes so what do i have for muscles? at 35.6 Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and then in terms of the bone mass, these are just how heavy your bones are. You are being at two, and normal roughly usually do two to three kg. Oh, yes. so I have heavy bones. <laughs> I wouldn't say heavy; they are just within the normal Moment range. <laughs> Do not confirm if I'm portable. <laughs> yeah, and then now the body mass index. What the doctor was or was explaining. In terms of the body mass index, that is a nutritional parameter that is that we use to determine our nutritional status, mm -hmm. whether we are of normal weight, overweight, underweight, or obese. Mm -hmm. In that years, being at 20.7, the normal ranges is usually from 18.5 to 24.9, and then overweight is usually um, 25 to 29.9, and then obese is now above 30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at 20, I'm okay. Yeah, we are within the normal <laughs> range. So meaning, uh -huh. your weight and your height, they do correspond. Okay. Yes. That's good news, Dr. Ari. Yes. We must get results. Results are good. Uh -huh. And I will encourage we, the others also to have any. Uh -huh. That's uh, quite uh, impressive. I'm happy with your results. You may put the exam, guys. All right. So for you, for example, uh -huh. you might do the risk as uh, blood pressure, blood sugar, but already from that you don't have uh, a major risk mm -hmm. because the machine is able to analyze for us the potential risks mm -hmm. so that you can do other invasive tests like blood cholesterol, kidney mm -hmm. function, mm -hmm. lipid profile. Lipid profile now will show us your actual cholesterol level in blood. So when we do risk assessment at your BMI is above, we check your BP, we check your blood sugar mm. to check other complications of avoid and obesity. Okay. So for example, for you, we might not need to do the blood pressure mm. and blood sugar checkup. Okay. All right. So uh, this is technically something that happens after these results are not very corresponding to you know no, you the, the measurements mm -hmm. for other reasons mm. because you might it not BMI is the only cause for pressure. Mm -hmm. Could be stress, genetics. So the BP and blood sugar is still important as a normal wellness for human being. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. But I think we may have to cut it short. We, yes, we are yes, done. Yes. Thank you so very much. Maybe if you could just reintroduce or just uh, say your name again and where you work. Dr. Kimalizia. Uh -huh. It's okay. So my name is Muriel Amondi. Mm -hmm. I'm a nutritionist. I work at Equitiafia Kitenge Line South B. Mm -hmm. I'm also in charge of the wellness uh, programs that we are undertaking in our clinics. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can visit you anytime. Yes, you can. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Muriel. And Dr. Okay. Ari, one more time. Thank you. Uh -huh. As my parting shot, I'll just say that uh, let us be our own doctors. Mm -hmm. So you need to take your initiatives well and the entire community watching us uh, from various places. We need to understand how to take care of our health and especially the youth. We prevent lifestyle diseases so that at 50 years, at 60 years, 
will not be prone to these diseases. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you so very, very, very much for joining us. This has been the health segment here on Tuesday, the 6th day of June. Yesterday, by the way, was Environment Day, if you did not know. Fun fact. But today we're just keeping it uh, here <laughs> on health and entrepreneurship. So we bid you farewell. But you must say here on Y in the morning for the next segment. My name is Valentine. I'll see you soon.